hello dear students today in this video lecture we are going to study about working capital management when we say working capital management we are mainly concerned with current assets and current liabilities yes we have already seen what are current assets and what are current liabilities we'll again revise it current assets are nothing but all those assets that can be easily converted into cash within a period of 1 year or lesser than that yes and current liabilities are the liabilities which are to be paid within a period of 1 year so all the assets and liabilities which are to be completed within a period of 1 year are called as your current assets and current liabilities yes now there are two types of working capital we have gross working capital and we have net working capital now what is gross working capital let us understand we have already seen this but again we'll discuss it gross working capital is nothing but the total amount of current assets yes when you add up your all the current assets of your company what you come down to that's called as gross working capital and when i hope gross working capital is clear and when you deduct your current liabilities from current assets when you deduct current liabilities from current assets what you get is the net working capital what you get is the net working capital so the simple formula of net working capital is current assets minus current liabilities yes it is simple current assets minus current liabilities okay so these are the two types of working capitals which are usually used now let us go ahead with the estimation of working capital requirements we are talking about estimation as in if a company has to plan as in how much current assets or liabilities or rather how much overall working capital will be required for a company in its upcoming year how will it find out that that is done by using this method of estimation of working capital requirement by this method we try to find out that how much money or how many assets should be kept ready by the company so that it can meet all its current liabilities in the upcoming year working capital simply means that is a company self sufficient to fulfill all the current liabilities by using its current assets and that is what we are going to find out by using this method of calculation of estimation of working capital requirements now this is a format that we are going to see for working capital requirement assessment or estimation this is the format for estimation of working capital requirement if you look at it there are three columns you have particulars and then two columns for amount that is the inner column and outer column now let us see what all are the components of your working capital statement or working this is also called as working capital budget the whole statement can be classified into two parts part a and part b yes part a is nothing but your current assets part a consists of the calculation of all your current assets for which you will have to pay in the upcoming year yes under current assets the first entry what you have is stock in trade when we say stock in trade this is also called as inventory all types of inventories are covered under this single entry of stock in trade what all are the components of stock in trade the first is your raw material raw material is nothing but the unprocessed purchases whatever materials has been purchased from your vendors and is not yet used 
in any of the production activity are called as raw materials b is your work in process work in process is nothing but the raw material on which the working has already started the production processing has already started on the raw material that material is called as work in process sometimes it is also called as semi finished goods the third entry that is c is called as your finished goods yes the third entry is called as your finished goods now finished goods is completed product or completed output the products on which the pro the production process is complete and are waiting in your warehouse to be sold all those goods would be considered under this element of finished goods so this mm. all these three mm. a b and c they comprise to the stock in trade which is again inventory the next part part 2 is your debtors now who are your debtors debtors are your customers to whom you have sold your product on credit meaning the sales have already been executed however the payment is yet to be received those sales are clubbed over here and called as debtors since that is a money to be received so it is called as your current asset the third element is called as your prepaid expenses any expenses that you were supposed to pay in the year of estimation but the payments are made prior to the beginning of the year all those estimate all those expenses are called as prepaid expenses the fourth entry is your cash and bank balance the cash available with the organization and which is deposited in the bank account of the organization all that comes under your cash and bank balance now when you add up all these entities the total is your current the total of current assets the total a is nothing but your total of current assets which we have already seen is also called as gross working capital this is part a now let us move to part b part b is your current liabilities part b is your current liabilities now under current liabilities the first entry what you have is of creditors now who are creditors creditors are your vendors or suppliers from whom you have purchased materials from whom you have purchased your raw materials on credit basis that means you have purchased the material with a promise to pay them pay them later that amount would be entered over here under creditors the second is delay in payment of expenses now all the expenses related to the production including your wages salaries and all types of overheads are all clubbed over here under this entry of delay in payment of expenses just to tell you even the wages that you pay or the salaries that are paid are all on credit basis and how is that when a person works from 1st of a month say for example 1st of april to 30th of april his payments are made in the month of may that means his working is on credit and so that is under delay in payment of expenses
Now, when you add up all your current liabilities, you get the total of B, which is your total current liabilities. Now, moving to the estimation part. Once you have easily calculated the total of A, that is current assets and total of B, current liabilities, the job is very simple. To calculate the net working capital, what we do is we just have to subtract A minus B. That means we have to deduct the current liabilities from the current assets. The total current liabilities are deducted from the total current assets. Once you deduct current assets minus current liabilities, what you get is the net working capital. What is it called as? It is called as net working capital. And how do you get that? The formula is simple. Current assets minus current liabilities. Okay. Now, this is the figure that is called as net working capital that we are trying to estimate. However, many a times, many companies, they always try to have some money as contingency margin. Now, what exactly this contingency margin is? Contingency as in any emergency expenses, any uncertain, unforeseen expenses, which were not planned, but which you have to incur. So, usually the contingency margin is added on the networking capital on a percentage basis. Many companies add on a 10% contingency margin to the networking capital. Simply meaning, if you have calculated the networking capital, you just have to add 10% of the same networking capital to this figure and what you get is called as your contingency margin. Once you add this contingency margin to your networking capital, the final figure that you get is called as total working capital. And this figure is your actual working capital requirement that you have calculated for your company on the basis of current assets and current liabilities. So this is the method and this is the format by which you can calculate the working capital requirement for any company. I hope the concept and the format is clear to you all. In our next video lecture, we are actually going to solve a numerical based on the same method of estimation of working capital requirement. Thank you.